In the last 50 years or so, there has been an increase of Eastern style icons coming into our oratories, and a lot of them contain a configuration of letters which comes from this gospel. It can be translated, I have vanquished the world, I have overcome the world, here it's I have conquered the world. Any classic icon of the Saviour has the letters for Jesus, Christos. Usually you'll find Ho, which is the, and then Alpha on one side and Omega on the other. But if you look carefully, you'll also find the verb Nika, conquers. And if you look carefully, you will find that he is there as the Almighty, the conquering king who reigns, Ho Pantokrator, the one who has all power. And he is doing two things. He is claiming that authority as supreme teacher and will therefore have a book in one hand. And he is also sanctifying, blessing, absolving, doing all for the world that has issued from his hands with the elevated right hand held forth in blessing. In the Eastern style, which has these two fingers joined with the thumb and these two fingers extended, it all has symbolic meaning, Trinitarian, and also the union of the two natures in one person. All has a meaning, and one has to read an icon. And the correct term is that one writes an icon. Hence, one is a writer of icons, not a painter, iconographer. Graphene is to write. An icon is a similarity. It is something which bears some kind of suggestive similarity to the one represented. And it has to be done not as an intellectual exercise, but as a contemplative one, with fasting, and set prayer before one starts, imploring that it be a sacramental by the end. Hence the veneration that they give to these icons, which when they come to me, are placed at the altar for 40 days and then chrismated with the chrism that consecrates. Sometimes it happens because people know that I have the Eastern link and they're aware of the importance of venerating the invisible through the visible. It's something that we need to recuperate. If one looks now at many a celebration in the West, the notion of the other has been largely lost. Not everywhere, but tendentially. And it needs to be recuperated. The language of the Trinity is mystery expressed in silence. And already, if one comes to encounter the Trinity in a noisy mode, and also in a human mode of engaging with each other, before, during, and after, then we're not in a favourable mode of encounter with the beyond. We're getting more of the same thing. In the East, they have time. We, in Ireland, are used to looking at our watch. In the East, that doesn't enter into the equation. It goes on from the crack of dawn, usually about six, half six, until nine or half nine in the heat, three hours. And people come usually mainly for the last hour. But they have time to enter into mode. Why? Because they, at that point, don't communicate with each other at all. Their participation mainly is with the mind, the heart and the body. Much movement of the body, much affection shown for the invisible through kissing, and much awareness in which, being isolated from each other and from all that is human, they are accessible to the spirit of the beyond. 
They are in mode. Question mark. Do we have the same encounter in our quickies? It's important because actually if one multiplies that by not one parish but a whole diocese and a whole country, that country is in trouble. It's in spiritual trouble. Because the average believer is not having a profound encounter. He hasn't time for it. Add to that the way that he may be carrying baggage in his soul, we're in serious trouble. Because the Lord can't penetrate a barrage of both noise and unconfessed sin and minister in the same way as he would to a free soul, a peaceful soul, of which the Gospel speaks. He warns them that in the world they have tribulation, but in him they have peace. And peace is the mode and locus of encounter with our God. He is a God of peace. So all our encounters in God, especially liturgical, must have that atmosphere. It applies to any encounter, a prayer group, a family rosary, even grace at meals. If we're in prayer, we're in peaceful prayer. But above all, if we're serving God with his angels at the altar, it has to be maximally a reflection of the peace of the angels in heaven. Do you know but the recently beatified John Sullivan spent many months in one of the most severe monasteries of the world, Simonos Petra on Mount Athos, while still an Anglican. He was a Greek scholar and learned modern Greek and therefore understood every word of the office and the liturgy. He wanted to enter at the end of that period and was told but it was not for him. But I too, when in school, had something similar to that encounter because my parents took me to Greece just after a levels And Dad knew that one place would be very interesting to visit for me. And fair play, he found his way to the Mount Athos, which is in Greece itself. It's a rock formation called meteora, which means meteors. They go up perpendicularly, and on the top are old monasteries. And until in the last century they made some kind of proper pathway and road, the only way up was through being winched up in a huge basket. But when one got to the top, one was apart. And it happened to be the Feast of the Transfiguration, <coughs> the 6th of August, <coughs> 1972, when we got there. And I remember being deeply touched by something from the beyond. There, time stood still. The lamps were burning quietly in the church on the top of one of these perpendicular formations. One looked and one saw down there a huge panorama, the world far away. There was no noise. The icons and the lamps suggested the beyond. And that day also I assisted at three hours of liturgy in the Eastern Star. There was no Catholic Church for miles. And I was really moved. And I thought, this is something I must never lose. God is wholly other, and the way of approaching him is not that of the human at all, at all. As it happens, in school I also read a lot of material from the East. One I came across was the life of a great Eastern Orthodox hermit, Seraphim. St. Seraphim of Saraf, who had all the gifts, including prophecy, and prophesied the Bolshevik Revolution way before it happened. He was very austere. He was similar to the one that you have the picture of in your little oratory, 
Sardar Maclouf, who had similar gifts. He, of course, was under Rome, even though he was of Eastern Rite, but this one was completely Eastern Orthodox, <coughs> Seraphim, and he would spend the whole night in prayer quite often. He had a friend, a soul friend, who would like to spend time with him. He did, one night, and was with the saint on the mount in prayer. He managed to keep awake, and towards the first rays of dawn, he happened to catch sight of the saint, Seraphim. He was by then going into trance mode and ecstasy. But yet he was in touch with his friend and was able to communicate with him and ask him a question. What do you feel? And his friend calmly answered, an immense well-being, a profound peace. Seraphim, still in ecstatic mode, but in contact with his friend, answered calmly, This is the peace of which the Lord spoke. That is what we need to feel when we're at the consecration and at Holy Communion. The like of jokes, applause, references to football, are completely out of place and God has his hands tied with regard to the blessings that he wants to confer upon us if we block him out with that in his presence. What he wants is deep peace which means the shedding of sin which weighs on the conscience and troubles it and clouds it and peace also in the mode of chant and praise used because happy, clappy music does not favour the Holy Spirit's work. Harmony, calm, chant, even Teze chant, which is harmonious, greatly does. We can defeat the object of the exercise by fiddling around with pages, books, guitars, and things which we think create great atmosphere, when God is actually within and is more easily contactable if we simplify but go inwards. The great advantage of a child that we know is that we can close our eyes and think about Jesus and not about the child. So I leave it there my friends but it concerns us all because it's as though we are deflecting the graces that God has as it were in the package because we think we can do it better than Jesus himself, who asked for sincerity in prayer, what he called worship in spirit and in truth. Agion Oros, Mount Athos, and its equivalent in the Western world, the Carthusian life. There is a place on earth where all the earth afar is held, where man alone may walk. Alone, I say alone, where deeds of worth alone in days are done, where little talk of little matters little may have room, for heaven fills the air, and where the sky is virgin blue, the hue of distant gloom clouds not the path of angels that draw nigh. O holy land, this is 
where I would stand. This is where I will stand. For angels too. Walk here, in where I am. And this, the hand that fashioned Athos, quiet Erin knew. And bids me bar a little more their home from demons that mid seraph wings would roam.